Hello, and welcome to Shampoo and Booze, a podcast about Airbnb and short-term rentals at shampooandbooze.com. We are Ryan and Ashley, sisters who run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week, we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. Send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to cover the topics that you care about. We are also available to give design and listing advice for your Airbnb or short-term rental. Check out our services page at notperf.com to book a time with us. Hello, welcome to episode 67. We are talking about Airbnbs that we have been to this summer. So Ryan and I both have spent some time traveling and I spent some time in Burlington, Vermont and Wells, Maine and Ryan, you went to? I went to a mid-sized college town in Virginia. (laughs) I'm not going to say exactly which one (laughs) because you could probably very easily find this Airbnb. And Brooklyn, a really cool, hip, expensive part of Brooklyn. Nice. So we thought that we would just talk about our experiences staying at these Airbnbs. What did we learn? What did we notice? And some things that you could pay attention to for your own rental. Okay, so let's start with Burlington. You were in Burlington, Vermont. You took like a weekend little bike trip thing up there and you guys stayed in an Airbnb. Yeah, and I hadn't spent any time in Burlington really before, a little, little bit, but not really like vacation time. And it's very cute, cute, cute town. And uh, it's kind of like a European city in some weird ways. Um, They have uh, this amazing bike trail that goes up Lake Champlain. And they even have, um, there's this area where boats have to cross through the bike trail and they have a uh, a bike ferry. It's just for for ferrying bikes, like literally 200 feet. And you get on and they park your bike for you on the bike ferry and then they go like 200 feet and then you get off of it. It's adorable. Yeah, they've got farmer's markets. They have this long uh, pedestrian uh, street that's just like full of restaurants and shops and cafes and bars and it's just it feels very European and it also feels a little bit like being in the northwest like you have all these views of Lake Champlain and the kind of hills around you and it's actually quite hilly um Burlington so anyway so we were staying up for the weekend we wanted to be able to stay in town and be able to ride our bikes everywhere we didn't want to have to drive too far what I didn't realize because um my partner booked the Airbnb, but it was actually like a shared space. So it was three rooms and a common room. And I think this is just my pondering. As soon as we arrived, I was like, how did this come about, this strange configuration? But what I think it was is it was right across the street from the university. I think it was like at some point they bought this house and they turned it into like temporary student housing or something because it felt like three, you know, dorm rooms and a common room and there was a common bathroom. And there was like a common little kitchenette. And so I couldn't think of any other way that it had come about, except for it was either student or professor, you know, temporary professor housing or something. So when you rented it, was it just you renting one of the bedrooms and then the rest? Yes. Was, so you must have been like, you did what? Because that's a little bit... No, because he, he did say he was like, there are some Airbnbs in town, but they're not crazy affordable. And he was like, this is the only thing available that's like in town. Like, would you be okay with that? And I was like, you know what? I don't mind going scrappy. Like, let's see how it goes. And we were so pleasantly surprised because something like that can go poorly, right? Like it was a small room, um, but it had air conditioning which saved our lives. It was like one of those like 99 degree days this summer. And to be able to come back to this like tiny, cute, cutesy, McCutester little room and just like be able to nap in the air conditioning was so important. Um, And 
you know, it just, it was very tasteful. It was kind of like bohemian in a way that wasn't annoying, you know, it was <laughs> yeah. actually, yeah, it was like, you know, I didn't feel like there were just like weird old dirty tchotchkes everywhere. It actually felt like well thought out, you know, like even, you know, it basically they had upgraded something that was probably built in the 60s. Or maybe the 70s. And I felt like their color choices were on point. I felt like upgrades that they did, but also keeping certain things like kind of old funky light fixtures that actually worked, you know. So I feel like there are ways that people renovate spaces and they keep something that they think is like cool and kitschy, but it's actually just like incredibly ugly. And I felt like the design choices that they made were actually really tasteful. And they had this, like, message board that was for guests that was super helpful. It was, like, the Wi-Fi. And it said who was in each room, which I thought was actually kind of nice and welcoming. It was, like, Bill and guest, you know. And then it was, like, Sophie and Sarah in room three, you know. And and so it was kind of like, okay, this is who's here. So that was nice. Um, It felt kind of hostile honestly. It felt like a little, like, Euro hostel. That's what it sounds like. But it sounds like they did it well. I mean, you can go to a Euro hostel, you know, in Europe and be frightened. Um, But, yeah, it sounds like they really thought about it, which is something you don't always find on Airbnb. It's like somebody thought about this. It felt really well thought out. It was like the first time I stayed in a place that was that had like shared common spaces and shared, you know, rooms that I felt like we actually had our own space. And they also had this gorgeous garden in the back and they had all of these different like seating nooks and it just felt like there were places we could be and spend time together and not be like bombarded by like college students you know actually what's funny is when we first showed up I, I looked at my partner and I was like if this is a frat house that somebody turned into an Airbnb, I was like, I am getting a hotel. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it's funny because it's so not like getting a hotel where you're like, it's a hotel. Like, there's not much to question. But then, you know, Airbnb, there's so many variables, right? There are. It's like, and this is the thing, right, is we always say this, it's like, don't surprise people, you know? And I was just so worried that it, like, looked decent in pictures, and when we showed up, it was going to be, like, dirty and, you know, like, 20-year-olds running it, but it so wasn't. It was so well taken care of. It was such a pleasant surprise for it to be, like, actually above and beyond what I thought. It was wicked clean, too. And we had, like, super clean sheets and... You know, everything just felt really, really well taken care of. So that just felt great. They had a Kerrig coffee, though, which we were like, womp, womp. Look, we're going to have a whole episode about coffee, and it's not about K-Cups. Like, we I are know, not about K-Cups. So funny. But anyway, so that was my that was my Vermont um, cutesy McCutesville. Do you want to talk about your mid-sized college town in Virginia? Yes, the mid-sized college town in Virginia. So Jay <laughs> and I, Jay and I went to this conference about uh, small incremental real estate development uh, in this town, and um, we were like, obviously, we want to take the chance to not just stay in the hotel that the conference was in, but let's stay in an Airbnb. And we found an Airbnb that was in uh, a warehouse that was being redone as apartments. And uh, I think there was only one apartment that was an Airbnb and the others were long-term tenants. And then these people, it was a couple and their five children uh, lived in one of the lofts. So they had their own loft and they were renovating it, you know, apartment by apartment. I mean, painstaking you know, redid the AC, redid the electrical in like a 30,000 square foot apartment with retail in the front that there was a little bookstore. And, I mean, like the, I think renovating like this tiny building that we're renovating is a lot of work. Like these people were like a level above that, right? So we super appreciated like everything they had done. 
this apartment was set up as an Airbnb. Um, the one I'll talk about in a second wasn't set up like that. So there's a little bit of a difference, but they, um, let's start with this. Okay. The, the bed was super comfy. Like I slept great in the bedroom. I was like, this is awesome. However, there were no plugs by the bed. They did have like bedside tables so I could put my phone and like water and like whatever. Uh, but I had to plug my phone in really far away. So I was just c- kind of like, meh, that kind of sucked. Their bedroom, they had no no dresser or any hooks. They had like, uh, and the, the, this loft was huge. So there was like room for tons of furniture, tons of practical furniture. And it was very sparse. Um, they had a little chair in the corner that like, it was like made out of, I don't want to say raffia. That's not, it's like, it was like a bamboo wicker type chair with like a really straight back. I'm like, I don't know what this chair is meant to do, but I'm definitely not sitting in this chair. So it was like stuff like that where you're like, okay, I'm going to put my clothes in this chair cause there's no dresser. And they had like, um, a pole to like hang stuff, but I had stuff that like you wouldn't really hang. So, you know, it's things like that where you're like, okay, there's plenty of room in here for like a huge line of hooks in every room. Um, a, you could have a full size dresser in there if you wanted. So it wasn't a space issue. It was like almost like it wasn't a space. Yeah, it wasn't like oh, this is a tiny bedroom and you can't fit it. It's like this is a massive loft where there's like barely any furniture. Um, the their curtains were like their windows were 20 feet tall. They're these huge industrial windows. And the curtains were on these like curtain rods. And you'd be like trying to push them over. And you're just like, they built this system like it's like a regular curtain rod. And like some of the curtain rod hook things had like fallen. And you'd have to get on a ladder to fix it. So they were getting like caught up on the poles and stuff. And you're like, there's got to be a better system for these windows. Because, you know, it's things like that where, where you're like, you know, you're almost there. Like you're almost there with it being like perfect and super comfy and like great. But it's things like that where you're like the curtains are all janky. And if you don't have the curtain shut, the, the street lights because this place is downtown. The street lights are coming in the window and you're like... Yeah. I definitely need those curtains, yes, you know? for sure. Yeah, and so, you know, it's, it's like, they were just, they had a brand new kitchen. Like, they did a gorgeous job on this building. The floors were, like, the old, like, mill floors from whatever industry was in there. And you're like, this is so cool, but it's just a little bit mm-hmm. off, you know? It's just a little bit off. Um, you know, they could have used more comfy furniture, like their little living room area was small and like only one person could like fit on the couch. (laughs) It was really weird. And their TV was tiny and it was across the room. I'm like, this is a massive loft. Like you could have a much bigger TV. Without it feeling like ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, this room is huge. Mm -hmm. And like your tiny, your tiny TV is like across the Mm -hmm. room. Also, they had a K-cup maker. They didn't have a drip coffee maker. Like, we bought, we went to, like, the cool coffee shop down the street and, like, bought, you know, the coffee that they roasted. And we were like, yeah, we'll make this. No grinder, no drip coffee maker. Couldn't couldn't do that. Um, the K-cups tasted horrible. They're totally stale. So, you know, we wake up in the morning and go to the coffee shop. But, um, oh, the other thing, too, is they had a lot of, like, religious pamphlets um, which to me is a huge turnoff. Like everybody can have their religion and that's cool. And she was definitely talking to us about her religion before we got in because <laughs> we met her in person and that's fine. I'm like, cool. Awesome. But to have like pamphlets on the bedside table and like all the tables, you're no, like, okay, that's a lot. That's, that's a lot. You know, you feel a little bit like, oh, mm-hmm. it's just, it's just not, yeah. I, I don't think people should do that. Like, it, it was a turnoff. But other than that, like, they were doing a beautiful job on the on the building itself. It just was like, you know, there's, there's a little things. Oh, yeah, broken wine bottle opener, which was obviously devastating. I was like, <laughs> your wine bottle opener is broken in half. So did you take a screwdriver to your wine bottle? <laughs> no, you know what? I planned for this. I brought my own. That is amazing. How many Airbnbs have you been to that didn't have a freaking wine opener? Yep. 
So I had, and look, we drove. It's not like we like flew or took a plane. We drove from home. So I had brought groceries and stuff for breakfast anyway. I was like, I'm tossing in my wine bottle opener because I know that they're either not going to have one or it's broken. And it was, it was broken. That's why, honestly, I have like two or three of those like corkscrew ones, different ones at my Airbnbs because someone's going to take one home by accident because they thought it was theirs or they're going to break it. And then someone's there, they want a nice bottle of wine after like hiking all day, and they're like, I can't open my wine bottle. And it's such a bummer, right? And then someone has to like go to the store, or I mean, I don't even know what they would. I'm like, there's some techniques where you can open bottles with a nice. This is what we say, which is like, if they, if you don't, if you don't give people what they need, they will improvise. You don't want people to improvise opening a bottle of wine. Nope, nope, nope. Have you ever heard the technique where you, like, hit the bottom of the wine bottle with a shoe? Anyway. Not, not going to try it. Like, exactly. Just not going to try it. There's going to be broken glass everywhere. So, yeah, corkscrews. Have three of them, please. Why don't you... So you were just in Maine, like, yep. last weekend We were or just something. in Maine. We were in Wells, Maine, which is a huge vacation spot on the beach. And it's basically... It, it, so there's an ocean and then there's this long strip of um, rentals and houses and, you know, year long people. Not that many, though, I don't think. And then on the other side of that big strip is this huge marsh. So it's like this little strip of houses on either side. You know, it's like two to three houses deep, basically, from the ocean to the marsh to the marsh. And then there's just like this main drag that just goes and goes and goes. And it's, it's incredibly full of rentals, you know, multi units and single little cottages, you know, dating back bajillions of years. So it's like the whole, the whole, uh, gamut. And basically I, I didn't, I don't even know if this was, I think this was on Airbnb, but it was a short term rental and it was my partner's family that rented it. And I think there were like eight to 10 of us. It's sort of, you know, they got it for a whole week. So people would arrive, people would leave, you know, it was sort of like people were coming and going. It was interesting because we had talked about this before about the Cape where they required everybody to bring their own sheets and bedding and um, towels and things. And I was so surprised because I was like, oh, my God, this really does exist. People really do require that. And I think, and I'm curious what you think, they also said that we had to leave the house how we found it, which felt unclear to me. It was sort of like... Did they have cleaners come or didn't they, you know, and I wasn't there when everybody else arrived. I came a couple days later. And so it was like, do we have to mop the floors? It wasn't. They definitely weren't that clean when we arrived. You know, the other thing is we opened a closet in a bedroom we were staying in and there just was like random stuff that had kind of been like thrown in there, you know, and I was like, oh, this would make sense if each individual renter was responsible for cleaning the house because clearly nobody has looked in this closet since who knows when, you know? So it just had a funny feeling of like, who's here in between or is it just like guest by guest? And how would you as a tenant, I mean, I'm sorry, how would you as a landlord ensure that like things weren't just like leaving the house and with what guest, you know? Well, it's weird because it's like, I understand that old school mentality of you bring your own sheets and linens because I'm not paying for those and washing them and getting them. Like, it's a whole Mm -hmm. thing. It's a whole thing. I get it. And also having the house clean between guests is a whole thing. That's like my whole business. If I didn't do any of that, I'd just be literally doing nothing. But at the same time, you're like, this is a new era (laughs) in short term rentals. Like, if they're, I guess you'd have to ask whoever did the re- did the you know booking of the rental of your group. Like, did they charge a cleaning fee? And if so, uh, is that just like someone coming in and like looking around and being like, okay, this is clean enough? Or are they scrubbing the toilets? Like, yeah, I don't know. And so, 
you know, I'm sure some of it was in, it just, it felt like the person who was handling it of our whole group was themselves kind of unclear about what state it should be in when we left. And so that made me think it's not clear, you know, <laughs> like it wasn't made clear what the expectation is and is someone coming in after us who's going to clean or is it just another guest? So anyway, I thought that was really interesting, just, you know, that those rentals still exist and that, you know, clearly people still rent them. I mean, to say we were unhappy, I think, is not exactly it. I felt like it was a great house. It had a great location, um, you know, lots of porches, like good, good overall experience there for sure. Um, but there were definitely details that I felt like were truly missed. And one of them was that just feeling like a little uneasy about what is the situation here. And, you know, are we going to get in trouble for not leaving it how we're supposed to leave it? The other thing is they had a K cup coffee maker for like a 10 person rental. Yeah. I mean, if you are, allowing that many if it's not just a couple like a little bungalow no. for a couple you're like k cups are not enough like in the morning you want to be able to brew a big old thing of coffee for your whole and group we we probably made like three cups of coffee in the morning right. i mean no i'm sorry three pots of coffee yeah, in the morning because I mean, like if you are coffee fanatics you're gonna have a couple cu- cups each like i'm like so i'm gonna have three three like each adult here is gonna have like three cake you know it was like so we actually went out and bought a coffee maker (laughs) oh my god i've done that i bought a french press for countless airbnbs and i'm like really you guys like that's so sad it's ten dollars at walmart just put one in your place like just put one in and if it breaks like it's ten dollars like the cheapest one is ten dollars it's a basically a percolator it costs nothing yeah It's craziness. The other super weird thing is that, you know, it was clearly like a family house, you know, and I'm sure they rented, they probably rented it forever, you know, but what was weird about it is each cabinet, upper cabinet, the doors were this big, which meant they couldn't fit anything. They were like six inches. What? Which meant you couldn't fit anything in. You had to put things in this way like sideways to get them in so it was like you would open this little thing it was like the size of my hand it would be like you know it was like i was like who what grandfather designed these cabinets it was the most bizarre thing i almost i should have taken a picture of it but i didn't it was so bizarre okay (laughs) i'll i'll go into my brooklyn experience because it's kind of similar um where this was so park slope brooklyn fancy okay also the pictures of that place were redoncular town yeah like i'll i'll put pictures of the place like to show where we stayed because it look i walked in this house it's a late 1800s four-story brownstone the family owns the entire thing um i walked in i was speechless i was like i mean the people i was meeting we were I was on a work trip for this video um, project that I'm working on with a bunch of other people who live in different parts of the country. So one of them lives in Park Slope. So we all gathered there. But I walked in and I like every little detail. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't believe they have this. They have the original mantles. They have the original tiles. All the original tiles in the bathroom. One of the bathrooms had the original sink, like marble sink from the 18th. Like, I was just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, it was just... I couldn't believe someone owned this house. I'm like, people own houses like this in New York? Like, it was huge. Like, you walked in and there was, like, this big sitting room that you literally just sat in and waited for people to come down the stairs. Like, I mean, my friend who lived in Park Slope, she's hilarious. She was like, yeah, see this front room? That's my entire apartment, you know, like, three blocks away. (laughs) Like, that's my whole world is this front room. Yes. Yes, exactly. I'm talking my kitchen, my bedroom, my bathroom. Like, it's right here. (laughs) And and you'd, like, stand at the stairs and look up and, like, look up to, like, the third floor. You're just like, what? Oh, my God. Like, I couldn't couldn't believe it. I was just like, I can't believe this is real. So the thing about this house, right? So an entire family lives there. It's a couple with three kids. So it's not set up as an Airbnb. Like, they are renting it. New York has rules. You can only rent so many days a year. 
Um, and basically they were renting it in the summer when they went to the Hamptons to their other house. Lucky them, which is, no, that's nice, <laughs> which is funny. You know, I don't mean to make fun of people like that, but clearly they have money. Um, it's a $5 million house in the middle of the most gorgeous place in the city in Brooklyn. Uh, they own a house in whatever part of the Hamptons. And but so it's funny because you're like, why are you renting this out to strangers? Because you have enough money. Like, obviously, it helps them pay their bills, you know. Right. It's so funny. I'm like, if anyone's listening to this who has a gorgeous Park Slope <laughs> apartment, like, totally invite us back. Yeah, like, it just so you wonder, you're like, why are rich people renting this to people? Whatever. Um, like to strangers. Yeah, to yeah. strangers, right? Yeah. So it's not... So, but who knows? Right, whatever. Like, they're saving for their kid's college fund, and this is paying for it. Right. Like, they're not right. there for, you know, two weeks, and it's fine. Yeah. Um, so when when a house is not set up for Airbnb, even if it is set up for Airbnb, as we found, there are weird situations. Like, they had... They don't have an electronic lock, so they had keys. But there's, like, five or six of us at times, they had two keys. And because it's an old 1800s New York building, you can't get out of the building without a key. So if I am going down to... That sounds like a fire nightmare. So it's a safety nightmare and it's a fire nightmare. And if two people are using the key at once, but other people are like trying to go to sleep and two people are going out to like go meet their friends at a bar or whatever because they're off work because this is a work trip. You're like, okay, I have to lock the door. But like now everyone who's in the house is literally locked in. Right? So there's like weird. So like, okay, we need more keys or what we I guess what we could have done is there was a lockbox for the keys. So we all anyone who was going out could put the keys in the lockbox. But then the people inside are still locked in. So it was this whole like, you know, mind, mind problem where you're like, how do I leave, but give someone the key, but not be locked out, but want to stay out till midnight. And I had a problem Uh. where I actually came home at midnight one night and I didn't want to wake anyone up. But one of the people that was staying there with us chained one of the doors shut. Oh no. So me not wanting to wake anyone up is like, I'm chained out of this building. Like, she must not have known I was like just things like that where you're like, oh man, this is so. She was actually awake, thank goodness. Right. I'm like knocking on the door, you're like, like Can please, you please unchain this door. Thank you. There must be a song about that. <laughs> oh, and so another part of the keys was we couldn't figure out how to get to the back, um, the backyard. I guess the backyard was not usable, even though they said it was, because the old school door that went to the backyard had the doorknob taken off of it. So you couldn't leave in the back if there was an emergency, and you were locked in the house if everyone had the keys. Oh my god, that sounds so dangerous. So we had to just coordinate with people, like, okay, I'm going out, lock me out, Mm -hmm. and then I'll ring the doorbell, or I'll text you, and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, don't make key situations weird. Don't make keys weird. Have keys for the enough people that are staying there, is what they should have done, but they didn't. So speaking of which, there was a downstairs garden apartment that I just didn't even think existed, but there were actually long-term tenants down there, which I didn't realize until like the second day. And I'm like, oh my God, I hope we're not being too loud. Like nobody said that there was anybody in another, like they didn't explain that to us. So we're stomping around. They have this like amazing, obviously stereo system. And we were like, let's listen to music during dinner. And it's so awesome. And then we were like, oh my God, there are people that live downstairs. So we, we like tamped it down after that, but we felt really bad. So, you know, again, no confusion. Tell people. Don't surprise are, people. Yeah, there are renters downstairs. Like, I used to live in New York. I used to live in San Francisco. I used to live in Boston. It sucked to have people loud who are above you, yeah. you know? It's like, give people the information they need to be good, courteous guests. I wouldn't have been loud if, because we were like, we have, we the, have whole the whole house, house to ourselves. To ourselves. And then we were like, oh, there's an apartment downstairs and there are people down there. Oh, my Oy God. Vey. So so a second thing about that was the owners were actually in town for some of the time, not staying at our house. I don't know where they were staying or if they were just there during the day. But one time they actually had to come in the house 
And they let us know about it. They were like, is it okay if our son comes in and gets his, like, school uniform? He needs it for some orientation thing or whatever. And we were like, of course. You know, we met this son. And we were like, your house is great and whatever. You know, but it was also super awkward. We are like, we're, like, (laughs) he had to go into his bedroom. And one of our, you know, people that I was working with who was staying there has all her stuff in his bedroom. And she's like, (laughs) you know, like, it felt weird. There was another time where the owners had to come to the house and they didn't tell us ahead of time. We were in, we were actually shooting like technical videos, like nothing weird. We just had like a camera set up next to a computer, but we had like, like sound equipment set up and whatever. And we didn't ask them permission before, but we felt weird about it because the husband came home and he was like, oh, you know, he rang the doorbell and everything. And he's like, oh, I have to get something out of my desk and whatever. And we felt so awkward. Like, Always tell people if you're coming over. Absolutely. Like, that was really awkward and strange. And I almost felt like later I thought about it and I was like, I wonder if he was just checking up on us, honestly. I wonder if he, which is weird that anyone would want to do that. I don't know if that's what was happening, but it just felt weird where it's like, if you need to come in the house, you should really, even like, look, if we have to go to a yard of one of our rentals, like, oh, we have to get something out of the shed or someone's coming over to look at the roof just from afar, like, because we're getting it repaired in a couple of weeks. We always tell people the day ahead of uh, the day ahead of time and that day we will be like, we're coming over in an hour. We hope it's OK. We're not going to disturb you. We're not going to come in the you house. try and coordinate it with them, right? Because, like, right. you guys were on a work trip. You could have been, right. like... You could have been, like, doing a video conference with an important investor or something, right? Like, who knows? And it's like, you can't just assume that people are just, like, sightseeing or something, you know? Like, it's it's just, you have to be courteous. Right. Like, we try to coordinate, hey, when are you guys going out hiking and we'll come by and we won't bother you and whatever. Exactly. And if we do have to come in the house, if we're fixing something that they requested, like, oh, the tub's not draining and please come look at it. I'm like, just tell me when you guys are out for lunch or whenever and I'll come look at it. You know, you just have to do that because it's so awkward to be like, I'm just going to come by. Like, it just feels weird as a guest. Yeah, You're like, for sure. You're like, I am staying in your bed. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, like, it's weird. You're like, all my stuff is in your bedroom right now. Right, you're like, like, I I feel funny about that all of a sudden. (laughs) I didn't before, but now I do. (laughs) Yeah, because whatever. Um, So another part of that, like, we're staying in people's rooms. So I was going to, like, I pack super light, so it didn't really matter. But I was like, oh, I'll unpack all my clothes and whatever. And so I open the drawers and all their clothes are in there. Of course they are because they live there. So there's no place for anybody else to put their clothes. I just had, I literally just put my clothes on top of the dresser. Um, you know, the, the other thing about this, so I'm sure every room was like that. Like one of our, our people was, like I said, in the son's bedroom and she's like, she's like, oh, I know him well because there's pictures all over the place and his clothes are everywhere and like his computer is on the desk. It's like... Yeah, like you're in someone's house. Um, The other thing, too, about this house is it's a really old house. It's a late 1800s brownstone. So the electricity was either put in then or put in in like the 20s or 30s. And all the plugs were two-prong plugs. So we're setting up computers and cameras and charging cameras. And we have these like a couple like light kits. And like we couldn't plug anything in. Because, like, my my computer has a three-prong plug. And there were a couple of them. Like, there was one, maybe one in each room. But to have no converters or no, like, power strips that would convert it for just guests where you're like, I just have to plug, like, my computer in and, like, whatever. Uh, that was really difficult. So they hadn't really thought of that because I'm sure they navigate that all the time. Like, yep, you can only plug in your computer by the desk in that one room, you know? So that was odd and really tough because they actually knew we were coming for a work trip, but they were just like, whatever. Um, The kitchen was super messy. Like, the kitchen was clean, but, like, kind of like you said, you would open a cabinet and it was just, like, packed full of, like, just old cereal and, like, spices that have never been used and the other thing too about people who live in new york whether you're rich or poor people like most of the time eat out so you're in a kitchen and we're on a work trip and we're trying to like save money because we spent so much money renting this place 
that we went grocery shopping. We had all this food and we were like, where are their knives? Where's the spatula? They don't have a baking pan. Their oven was a gas oven that was like from the 50s, which looked really cool. But half the burners didn't work. I couldn't get the stove to work. I didn't know if I was supposed to like light a fuse inside the stove or, you know, like if you have weird systems like that, you need to tell people because they can't, they're not going to figure it out. If, if yeah. you're like, you got to write this. So I looked through their manual and I was like, I can't figure this out. And so I'm just not even going to try. I'm sure I could message them, but I'm like, I'm just not even going to try. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to fry everything on the three burners that work, mm-hmm. uh, which is funny because you're like, I'm in a $5 million house. You'd think that the oven would work. So a similar thing to that, to the kitchen was the bathrooms because This was like the original bathtubs and whatever they have. So I've seen this in New York before. They have like um, water turnoff spouts outside the bathtub and they have this weird drain thing outside the bathtub. It's like this weird 1800s thing that is still in the house. So I was having trouble using that. But the issue was one of our people one night we've been working like 12 hour days. She was like really wanted to take a bath. This like gorgeous like cast iron bathtub, right? And she was fiddling with not the 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 shower tub thing inside the tub because there was that too. It was like these outside basically water turn on and off switches for the whole bathroom. So she's fussing with that and she can't figure it out. So she just decides to take a shower. But somehow she left one of those on or it was on too much. And it started leaking water out of the thing. This is on the third the third story bathroom. And then it started leaking through the ceiling onto our bathroom because we were on the second floor. And we were like, we have no idea what's going on. None of us know how to use these turn off, turn on switches outside the bathtub. We don't know if we're supposed to use those or not. There was nothing in the in the pamphlet about it, like so eventually it was it was very minimal. It dried up. We told them about it. They were like, oh, that happens. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, are we ruining these people's house? And they were like, it's fine. Oh, my it, God. You must have been beside yourself. Well, it was funny because I was like waking up one morning at like 730 and Jay had been brushing his teeth and he's like, I'm like just awake. And Jay's like, um, there's like a water problem. I need you to get up right now. And I was like, what? <laughs> You know, it was minimal, but it felt really scary. <laughs> you were like, is this ceiling going to come in? I mean, it wasn't that oh, bad. Oh, my but we God. Because we yeah, have old houses, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we told them about it, and they're like, it's fine. Just make sure to turn off the water upstairs, blah, 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 whatever. But so, you know, like when you have weird things in old houses like that, weird systems that you need, just tell people. Mm-hmm. Like Totally. Just, when there's houses that aren't set up as Airbnbs also, they're just like, they know all the weird little quirks. Like, there are no three-prong plugs anywhere. <laughs> you know, you're like, you should tell people about that. Well, you know? and this takes us back to having friends and family stay at your house as, like, a, a test, test run. run. Because they're not going to know your weird, quirky things. And you know what? If you're having a house that is just for Airbnb, you should not have any quirky things Mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. You should have those systems down so that any... Look, sometimes even if you do have like the easiest system and you spelled it out for them three different times, they'll still ask you about it. And that's okay. But you're like, that just depends on the guest, you know? If it's like a... I mean, the two things that you mentioned were gas oven and (laughs) And gas burners and, like, major water on the third floor. Like, those are... Those are things that you want to spell out for people because if someone it will ruin your house, if someone travels to New York from Miami or Spain, you know, they don't know those systems. They don't know those weird quirks of old New England. You know, well, I guess yeah. technically New York is in New England, but, you know, yes. they don't know how old buildings like that might work. So, again, it's like just assume someone is literally landing from across the world because often they are 
I mean, if you're in a big city, particularly, people are coming from all over walks of life. Right. Yeah. And I think I think the thing that I always learn when I'm staying in Airbnbs, whether they're someone's house that they live in um, or whether it's set up for purely an Airbnb. I mean, it's like you got to let people know how to do things, even if it's the most obvious thing ever, um, provide things that people need. And just make sure stuff's not broken. Make sure stuff's not messy. Have, you know, if you have a house where, you know, like clean out your drawers for people if they're staying for two weeks, like have a single drawer for them, you know, like have a system set up where you don't have to explain it to people, you know, like, or you explain it to them and they get it. You know, like the place in Maine where the kitchen was all wacky and there was like, closets full of junk that people just threw in there because maybe there wasn't a cleaner no one was checking up on it like to me those are just unacceptable things that just should not be even though you can still have a good time i mean we had an amazing time in brooklyn no doubt i mean it was absolutely mind-blowing like i wanted to take photos of every little cool little detail you know um but yeah there were some quirks that i'm like that would have been nice if they spelled it out for me and maybe set it up for guests a little bit better if they are renting it out for many, many dollars a night. (laughs) That's the thing is like, you know, especially if you're charging a significant amount of money, it's like, you know, someone could be staying at a hotel for that, you know, or could be staying in a really nice hotel for that, you know? So it's like, what are the amenities that should be available to people? At that price point. Also, as like a fun experiment, if you're about to start an Airbnb or if you have already started one, you should go stay in other Airbnbs. Like whether it's in your area, although people tend to think that's weird, uh, or, you know, if you're taking a little vacation because you you quickly find out if you're missing something. If, if you're in, you know, someone's house and they don't have a plug by the bed or you know, their kitchen's messy and weird. And you're like, Oh, uh, I need to learn from this because I need to make sure that my kitchen is spotless and clean and has all the utensils for people right out front. You know, things like that. Just they help you learn so quickly. Okay, that's it for this week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Shampoo and Booze at shampooandbooze.com. As usual, send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to cover the topics you care about. Don't forget about our design and listing advice services. Head over to our services page at notperf.com to book your design advice session.